Well, I got a lathe about four months ago and thought I'd show some of the projects. Uh, this is oak and maple. Oil. This one was a piece of jack pine that I turned into a, into a lamp with a mahogany pontic on the top. Lamp. This was a little wren birdhouse that I made. Um, functional. The wife's claimed that it's got a place in the garden already. A little place for the birds to live through the summer. Made it so the top is removable. And this was made out of old skid wood. The dome that I had to put on the top. Some candle holders. Christmas ornament. And this was my latest creation. A lamp made out of dark mahogany, red mahogany, and maple. But I didn't uh, make a video of this, sadly. Let's get out to the shop. Well, I started turning my first bowl here. Sorry I missed me turning the outside. I'm just getting ready to put the finish and the sealer and the shine juice on the outside. So my camera was dead. But now I got the camera charged up. So I can keep you with me while I do this. Yeah, let's turn this light out. Sometimes it just makes it too bright to see what's going on. Homemade OB shine juice. Use this as a sealer and says for making a shine. This bowl's out of maple. And I don't know if it's actually going to be a bowl. It might be a lampshade for my next light lamp. Get into doing lamps lately. Something useful. <laughs> I guess bowls are useful too. Sand it all the way up to 400 with this. Use the orbital on it because I don't have a different power sander and I see I got some scratches. But on my first one, it'll be okay. Turn it on and give it some juice here. You always hold your rag so it'll shoot out of your hand like that instead of catching your fingers. And we'll get back to you in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to try to bring the shine up on this with this OG shine juice now. As you can see it's shining pretty good already. I'm just adding more to it.
Here I'm just uh, checking the pedestal that I've got there for the glass figurine that I'm going to use in this project. If you look at it this way, it could be a nice little salsa bowl, I guess. You put chips around the outside and some salsa in the jar in the middle. But I do believe I'm going to use this for a lamp sheet. And I knew you wanted to hear it sing, so here you go. Sealing it up using my OB Shine Juice as a sealer. DIY recipe. I use two ounces of two pound shellac, two ounces of alcohol, and one ounce of boiled linseed oil. I know some guys say you can mix it evenly, but the linseed oil is oily and it takes longer to dry, and it's only there for a lubricant, really. And I find with this, the shine stays on the uh, projects longer. If you thin it out too much or put too much oil in, it seems as the oil dries, it just dulls the finish a bit. Here we go. Well, this is my first attempt at doing segments, but I was always wondering how you get your cord length. Like, I made this cheat sheet, and of course your cord, le cord length goes across here. On here, I've got a 7-inch circle, 6-inch, 5-inch, 4-inch, 3-inch circle marked out. So I know how big I want my, my circle to be. I want about a 3-inch for this project. But the thing is, if you use your cord length, it's a little bit short. You're not going to end up with a full three inches. And I thought, well, what's an easy way to find it, figure that out? And I do it this way. Put it on the top of the arc. Move your ruler over so it's right on the inch mark. And I come over and I see I just need, oh, not even seven eighths. Just under three quarters. Just over three quarters. So if I cut them all at seven eighths, I'm going to be good. So when I put it on the lathe and I lay this off, I am going to have a full three inch circle segment ring. But I thought I'd show that because if you use your cord length, of course the cord length is rated at three quarters. Now if you cut your three inch uh, segments, this is a for 12 pattern. This, this sheet is set up so I can do 12 or 6. Right? Now if I only want to do a 6, I come to the top of the arc, measure across from the inch mark, and I'd see that about an inch and three quarters would suffice for each segment piece to set my backstop up so I know where to cut them on the saw. Now, I don't know if this is going to work or not. Like I said, this is my first time doing a segment circle, but I found this the easiest way. If I want to do a seven inch, I just come out here. If I want to do a six inch circle, I'm here. Five inch, four inch. I just drew it up. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Just do a simple measurement instead of doing the math for a cord, which doesn't work.
and then you have to guess at how much you have to add to get that full circle. So a three inch circle at the top of the arc. In a smaller circle, it's not going to matter as much. But yeah, I'm seeing basically just over three quarters of an inch. Hope this helps you out. Here's my first one done. I got a little bit of a gap here. I think I'm going to dry fit this next one a little closer because uh, with a little sanding out of the end and stuff, you can bring these in. But for my very first segmented ring, I think that's okay. We'll leave that, let that dry till tomorrow. And I'll get on the next one here. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Now you can see here, my first segmenting job, obviously my angles were off. And we have two halves. Now, pressed together and glued. But you can see the big gap. To make that full circle, there's a nasty gap on either side. But... Fortunately, there are lots of good people on YouTube, and I've been watching, so I glued these two separately by hand. You take two, you glue them together, you hold them for a few seconds, set them aside. You make your half circles. Now I can go over to my sander, my small belt sander. I can sand those two halves flat in the middle, so they will fit together, and you'll never really notice. My circle might be a little bit smaller than what I was wanting, but I, I did make them a little oversized for the lamp. Um, this one, I think what I can do is, as you can see, here I got a gap. I'm seeing light through there. I got some gaps. But I'll use a little CA glue in that tomorrow once that's all dry. And some sawdust, and I'll fill them in as I'm lathing it. I have to sand all this flat yet. And I have to sand this all flat yet so they will fit together and uh, yeah for my first segmenting I should have done more like the guy said I was rushing this a little bit and I didn't clean up my edges as nicely as I should have and everything but yeah that's why you have a little sander I'm actually getting a new sander uh, tomorrow that was on sale and it's got the five inch disc on it and uh, also a belt bench top sander for sanding such things like this but yeah this now I will leave these two and I will sand set them on the belt like this sand them flat and basically it should work out that you won't even notice it on the outside diameter and that will fix my gap problem so now you know you can thank Earl's small segment shop for that he told me how to do this. Now that I've got these segment rings created and they're drying till tomorrow, let's take this time to make a ornamental piece for the top of the lamp. Uh, I'm going to make a pineal here.
And this piece will be the piece to cover the mortise in the bottom of the shade and hold the finial on top. 